This is Dr. Okwebaan, who is the founder of Netvangelism 360 and the vision overseer of the Saba Embassy of Christ for All Nations. Uh, today, I want to share with you uh, the 10 biggest myths about internet churches. A few days ago, when we finally came out with the vision of um, uh, for the Saba Embassy for All Nations, an all online church, 100% internet-based church. All else basically broke loose with lots of people calling us names on the internet. People even saying that this is of the devil and the devil is the one behind internet churches. How can we talk about doing church on the internet and all that? And I was just stunned that with everything that is going on in the world right now, people actually think churches should not get more aggressive on the internet. They actually think going there is a bad thing, much less talking about doing everything online. So I want to talk to us about this today because I believe God often provides spiritual waves. Every once, every once in a while, God comes up with a, with a spiritual wave, and what the church does at that point in time determines what happens. I believe right now there is a massive, massive, massive move of God going on as far as the internet is concerned. And internet-only churches are only taking advantage of this spiritual way. I mean, how do you account for the fact that over 3 billion people, over 3 billion souls are online every day now? How do you account for the fact that while attendances at churches are declining, people are spending more and more of their time on the internet? How do you account for the, for the fact that that different things, different people, different faiths being shared online. Like I always say, there are no unbelievers anywhere. The question is whether your own belief is being pushed on the internet. Because make no mistake, somebody is teaching them what to believe. So there's a massive stuff going on out there. And for the first time in history, we have a situation where somebody can speak the word right here in the US, in Omaha, Nebraska, and it can take root in Australia. We have a situation where believers can gather everywhere all over the world simultaneously without leaving their rooms and call upon the name of the Lord. That's a massive spiritual wave that is going on out there. And it's just so sad that many people don't see it. If people are migrating online, then maybe the churches need to start migrating with them. So we're going to talk about how this is, how the uh, the, the, the myths that people have convinced themselves to prevent them from actually maximizing the use of the internet for the Great Commission. I mean, there's a massive spiritual wave out there. Billions spend hours online every day. Most people are plugged into the internet now in their personal lives more than ever. The platform for globalization of messages are everywhere now. You can send something out on the internet right now and it goes global simultaneously. Most aspects of human influence and interaction can be done on the internet now. After all, what is a great commission at the end of the day is to exercise influence over people so that the kingdom of God can be established across the world. And the internet right now presents a massive place to influence people for interaction. People are in several groups online. People are in the way you can hardly ever find anybody right now who doesn't have at least one major social media angle. It's either Andrew, rather Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, <laughs> or on, on Skype. They are everywhere. I don't personally know of anybody, no matter how traditional they are, who does not have at least one thing they are doing on the internet on a daily basis. That is the spiritual wave that the Lord has. has made available to us and the question is what do we do with it and rather than embracing it what i see many in the church and some of them pastors who should know better is them actually casting down this great opportunity to expand the kingdom message and actually are uh, cursing out guys who are trying to uh unless the power of the internet for the great commission actually saying that can you talk about believers gathering online and that is heresy we're going to debunk all of them tonight. We're going to talk about the 10 
biggest myths for internet churches. All right, the very first one. Okay, I believe, like I said, that God often provides spiritual waves, and internet churches are taking advantage of these new spiritual waves. But let's talk about the myths, the major myths that uh, that is out there. Number one, people tell the number one myth out there is that the internet is an evil place created by the devil as a playground to deceive believers. I mean, I could not believe that when uh, somebody actually said that concerning uh, what we are trying to do uh, with the cyber embassy of Christ for all nations, they said, why are you getting involved in this evil place? Because there's uh, pornographers there, there's uh, uh, molesters there, there's people, ungodly people there. And I'm like, that is exactly where God was sent us to. He didn't send us to go into the churches. He didn't send us, he didn't send us to, go and, to go and talk to believers. He sent us to go into the world. He sent us to go and meet those pornographers, those prostitutes, those ungodly people. That's where he sent us. So that is the first myth out there. So how do we debunk that? I don't believe that the Satan created the internet. I mean, Satan cannot create anything. By definition, we all tell ourselves, all right, that <laughs> devil is powerless. But yet, we want to credit him for creating the internet. How absurd is that? All power and all creation comes from God. The internet is a tool that God, in his infinite wisdom, allowed to come into being, and it is up to us and our free will what we choose to do with it. I mean, it's often ridiculous to hear us um, talk about how the devil is under our feet, how we're under his, how he's under our control, and how we need to display the blood of Jesus, and the devil will run away, and then we turn around when we don't understand something, or when something bad happens, and then blame him who has no power for creating it. When we use our free will to do bad stuff, then we blame the, by, by, uh, the devil. Just like church buildings became a tool to gather believers. After all, the, the church as it is today did not start in a church building. It started on the streets, people going from place to place. Later, it became convenient to gather them in a church building to minister the word of God to them. The same way, the internet is not available. It's not a viable tool to share God's word and disciple people to come to recognition of God if they choose to accept it, we don't make and we don't save anybody. We can't save anybody. All we as Christians can do is basically share the word of God, <coughs> share the, the works of God, let the light of God shine in us. And then people make their own free will, whether they want to accept Him, <coughs> excuse me, or not. Only the Holy Spirit can do the work of conviction. Your job, my job, the job of everybody in the mission field is to share Christ and let Christ draw those is going to draw onto him. So the, the internet was not created by the devil. The internet is a tool, just like a church building is a tool, just like a TV, television station is a tool, just like radio is a tool to gather believers together or to gather people together and minister the word of God to them. Myth number two, we are told that the internet corrodes real-life interactions and reduces uh, the church community. This guy, those who are saying this, uh, their theory or their position is that if people are constantly browsing the internet on their phones, on their tablets or laptops, they will no longer care for face-to-face -face conversations. And by putting the church on the internet, we are depriving people from going into the church on Sunday morning. I hear you guys. I hear that loud and clear. But this is what I have to say to that. It's how I would debunk that. I actually believe that the internet would actually help. The internet will actually help you and every church. Okay, and your church, your church community to grow and minister to people better where they are. After all, Jesus himself took the gospel to the people where they are. He didn't go to the synagogues to go be sharing it every day. He went to the marketplace because that is where the people are. Now the internet 
is where the people are. So it will actually help you to actually reach the community better, actually even help you grow the community better. Because now you can use email newsletters. You can use Facebook. You can use WhatsApp. We use that a lot. You can use Skype. You can use Telegram. You can use virtually unlimited number of tools now to keep in touch with your church members beyond the Sunday service, even if they are not physically in church. So your community actually has a potential to grow bigger rather than smaller. These platforms make it easy to chat as well as to share verses, prayer requests, and testimonies with others at church in different parts of the world. I mean, the truth is as strange as it sounds, more and more people feel more comfortable in an online community than in face-to-face -to -face crowd today. I'm not talking 2,000 years ago. I'm not talking 1,000 years ago. I'm not even talking 20 years ago today. I mean, how many times have you seen people share stuff happening in their house on their Facebook page that they would not even tell their friends? People will share their intimate, intimate, intimate stuff that they did. They will share with you the food they ate today that they will not tell you if they are meeting with you in person. They share their secrets. They share their hearts. They share their triumphs. They share their failures very freely in online communities now when they won't even do it in one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Isn't that amazing? Community is shifting. And the internet provides an opportunity for you to reach them more. People tell you the truth more when you discuss with them online than when they will talk with when they are talking with you one-on-one. -on -one. So even when you're counseling on the internet, you stand more chance if you are doing a face-to-face -face video counseling online to hear the truth from somebody than when you have them in a room in a church building. So that uh, meat is simply dozing old water. So what are the other meats that people are hung up about? <laughs> Number three, they will tell you, and they are telling me right now, me, it's amazing the kind of responses we are getting in just about three days. We have over 2,500 likes on our page and we have over 600 comments. Thank God most of them are positive. Many, many people are really excited and ready to embrace uh, this new move of God, but some out there, some of them even pastors, ministers of God, they are just impossible. They tell me, Jesus said we should not forsake the assembly of one another. <clears throat> Therefore, <laughs> the idea of an online church is unbiblical. I mean, we know God, Jesus said that. He said we should not forsake the assembly of one another, but what does that mean? They tell us that means uh, anything that is not uh, uh, people gathering together physically is unbiblical. What do I say to that? Yes, I debunk that. What is an assembly is no longer limited to physical building, location, or time or space. As an assembly is people getting together. An assembly is when people are gathered. Whether it's in a church building, on the streets, on the moon, on the phone, inside the swimming pool or on the internet. That is an assembly. That's an assembly. We assemble on Facebook groups, membership sites, online forums. Every day, virtually everyone, including you watching this right now, I'm sure you belong to one group or the other, either on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Skype, on uh, LinkedIn. There's just so many assemblies going on. Billions of people in assemblies every day. That's an assembly. We don't have to be physically in the same place to assemble. So why is it so weird to now assemble online in the name of Jesus? We assemble online to come and share tips about weight loss. We assemble online to come and learn about how to make money online. We assemble online to talk politics, to fight politics, to join Democrats, to join Republicans, to join PDP, to join the APC. We assemble in different groups on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Skype on every tool on Telegram to sell our cryptos. So why is it weird to assemble online in the name of Jesus? After all, the Spirit of God is not limited to physical touch, to time, or to space. The Spirit of God can flow through the internet just as well as it can flow physically. If you are still one of those people who believe that there's a touch and there's a physical interaction, God cannot flow. You actually need deliverance. 
because God is not limited by time of space. So whether you are you are gathering to worship him online or you are gathering to worship him on the street or you are gathering to worship him in a swimming pool or on the moon, it does not matter. The spirit of God moves anyway. All right, let's look at another. Now, uh, before we go to the, the, the fourth uh, mate here, I want to quickly invite those of us who may want to join us with us uh, to bring this vision to pass. Okay, we have the Cyber Embassy of Christ of all, for All Nations. We are launching officially February 2nd, 2020, but we are starting pre-inaugural uh, services the first week in January. Please join us to, as one of the pioneer members, workers, ministers, or pastors. I myself don't even consider myself as a full-time pastor. This is a church, uh, is a vision God has given me. And as soon as we can get that vision established, we want to hand this church over to somebody who has the calling of a pastor on a permanent basis. I probably won't do this for more than a year, maybe two on the outside. Seriously. Because I know my limitations. There are those that God has called to minister daily. We want you to join us with us so that by the time the vision is established, we can hand over the ministry to those who have the calling of pastor in their lives. I'm more of the calling of a teacher, of an apostle, even to enable of an enabler of the kingdom. My job is to help pastors do what they do best. But this is a vision God has given me for a couple of years now, and I believe I need to demo what God has shown for me in my heart and in my head. And as soon as we can demo it and it's working smoothly, we encourage every other church out there to start their own online churches. And I myself, I'm going to step aside and I'm going to hand over the ministry to somebody who has the heart of a pastor while I go out there and continue to encourage other churches and other pastors who want to get better with online church ministry. So please join us if, as you are watching this, if God is speaking to you that this could be something you should be part of, please go to the cyberembassy.org slash pioneers to sign up to be one of the uh, members of the church. As you join in, we're going to direct you to different places where you can, uh, uh, different departments you can join to help us get this work off the ground. That is my mission as a vision overseer to get it off the ground. But I don't envisage running the church for two, three, four, five years. That is not me. So please help me. Come on and help us make this work go out and be alive. And then we can give it to those who are going to run it in every area of a church. We're going to be doing discipleship online. We're going to be doing fellowship online. We're going to be doing worship online. We're going to be doing ministry online. We're going to be doing every aspect, including worship, every aspect of church. The five purposes of a church as Christ himself listed it in the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. We are going to execute all those five major, major purposes of a church on the internet. And we need you to help us. We need people to help us with fellowship online. We need people to help us with putting worship together on the internet. We need people to help us with putting discipleship programs together on the internet. So please go to the cyberembassy.org slash pioneers and sign up right now and I look forward to working with you in this new field, in this new harvest field that God has placed at our disposal. Three billion souls online every day. There can never be enough churches online for that. Our job is to get one done, a full all online church done and help as many other churches as might want to do one to get one done for their ministries. We are not competing with other churches. The devil is our competitor. We need to go out there and take the power of the internet from him and let the will, the purpose, and the word of God rule on the internet. That's the goal. All right? If you join us with that, please click on the button wherever you are right now and go on the internet. Go to the cyberembassy.org slash pioneers and join this great work. All right? Let's go back to the myths. So myth number four, what I hear people say, they say it's heresy to worship the living God on the internet. I hear that a lot. Like one of them actually said on our group page that, ah, I don't want to fight you, but me, I can never worship my God on the internet. And I'm like, hello, internet churches do not worship God on the internet. 
we gather on the internet to worship God. Big difference. Actual worship takes place in the spirit. God has been clear about this since 2,000 years ago. Jesus said it. The internet is just a convenient tool to gather believers. The actual worship takes place in the spirit and in the truth that we live. Only an ignorant religious person would think is actually worshiping God in a church building. The church location is just a convenient gathering place. The real worship takes place in your spirit and in your actions in the light of God's truth as explained in his word. You need to get that for many people who still think that they have to be in a church to worship. You are actually guilty of idolatry. God is spirit and he who worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The location you are in when you do the worship is totally irrelevant. Thank God for physical churches. It's a good thing. I'm not saying churches, physical churches are bad. Don't take the wrong thing from my presentation, please. Physical churches are good, but it's just a tool to gather believers. It's just a convenient tool. The real worship takes place in your spirit and in the truth that you live. Jesus was clear about this when he was talking to that woman at the well in John chapter 4. God is spirit. Whoever is going to worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That has got nothing to do with the physical building. It's just a convenient canopy to prevent rain from falling from on you, to make you comfortable from the sun when you're worshiping. But the worship is actually in you, in your spirit and in your action. Jesus said it in John chapter 4. And there's nothing that John uh, to, uh, uh, chapter 4 verses 21 to 25 that says you should not, that it must be in a physical place. In fact, he said <laughs> that neither you who worship God on this mountain nor even this, the Jews who worship on that mountain will worship all the way out. Because God is spirit. And whoever must worship him must worship him in, in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. That has nothing to do with where you are when you are doing the worship. Whether you are in the church building, whether you are on the boat, whether you are in the river, whether you're in a swimming pool, whether you're on the moon, whether you're on the internet looking at other believers, is irrelevant. The worship takes place in your spirit and in the truth that you live. Get that. The fifth myth, I'm told, we see that on our page on Facebook, the Cyber Embassy of Christ page on Facebook. I mean, that place is going, going really, really... Hey, right now, I encourage you to go there, go like our page, the Samba, the Samba Embassy of Christ um, uh, for All Nations on Facebook. It's amazing what is going on there. Go put in your own comments, engage in discussions there. People tell me it is impossible to have a real impartation of the Holy Spirit without a physical assembly of believers. I don't even know what they, what they are talking about. That, after they, they tell me that after all, the injunction is that Christians should not forsake the assembly uh, of one another and um, uh, and that with the judicial church it is impossible to I don't even know where they are coming from to, to be very honest with you. I don't know where they are coming from with that. I don't know. Okay? The, because the truth is <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't want to, I don't want to make light of this. The truth is that the Holy Spirit is not limited to a building or space. And there's no bigger assembly than the internet. Most people spend more time online than they spend with their spouses, their children, or their relatives now. Most people join different groups with people of like interest on Facebook, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Skype, Telegram, and are receiving impartation. So impartation is got nothing to do with where you are. The Spirit of God can move across channels. I'm not saying anything is wrong with people gathering in one place. Do not misunderstand me. But I'm also saying there's nothing wrong in people gathering on the internet. Because there is no bigger assembly in our lifetime right now than on the internet. Because most people spend more time online than they spend 
with their children, with their spouse. And the Holy Spirit is not limited by space or time. And when we gather online, that is an assembly of believers. So we are not forsaking the assembly of one another. As a matter of fact, every time we gather on Facebook or Skype or wherever we gather to worship God, that is an assembly of Christians who are gathered together in his name. We are two or three are gathered in my name. There I will be. There is nothing in that saying that says it must be a physical gathering. It can be gathering anywhere. With number six, I hear this a lot, that there are too many aspects of physical church that just cannot be replicated on the internet. And I can understand that. They tell me that with a digital church, it's impossible to do some key functions of a church, such as baptism, um, child dedication, uh, deliverance, holy communion. And I hear it. But this is what I have to say about that. This is what I have to say about that. Where is it now? Um, I'm on number six, okay. With a little imagination, you can actually replicate versions of nearly every aspect of church. The minute you start, you get it into your spirit that everything does not have to be physical. All of a sudden, your imagination will tell you how all these things, many of these things can be done. Yes, granted, I know some physical stuff cannot be done on the internet. After all, that's why we call it the internet. But that does not mean that thing cannot be done if you are not stuck on the idea that everything must be physical. Take communion, for instance. Who's to say you can't take communion as a community on the internet? Everybody's in their houses. They have their bread before them. They have their wine before them. There is nothing that says a pastor must give you the wine for you to be able to take it. Somebody prays across the internet. Everybody's in that service. The pastor that is ministering that day holds up his own bread, prays to it. Everybody holds up their bread. They eat it. They quote the Bible. They read. He said, do this in remembrance of me. It's a remembrance of what Christ did. That's communion. It's a remembrance of what Christ did on the cross, that of Christ going to the cross, of Christ choosing to die, rather than recounting that he is the son of God. It's a symbolism. So why can't it be done with you holding the bread and the wine and then drinking it together across the globe simultaneously following the online service? You're telling me the spirit of God will not move in that circumstance? The power of the Holy Spirit will not move simply because some pastor is not touching your hand and putting it in your hand? We need to get out of the religious mindset. I know this is controversial. But the reality is that the failure, thinking that something cannot work because you're not in a physical place, is a failure of, of the imagination and possibly a spirit of religion. While I do concede that might be something that might be physically impossible to do online, I get it. But most of the stuff that can be done in a church where the spirit is involved, can be done online. Even deliverance. The term deliverance cannot be done. Who says? The devil can hear the word of God without anybody touching it. Deliverance can be done online. You can be wherever you are and whoever is doing the prayer can pray and speak to that spirit that is in you and it will go. You don't have to be physically in his presence. Jesus did it. Jesus here, remember the centurion's uh, child. Say, go. Your child is already healed before you get home. The word go, went forth right there. It's not limited by time or space. And the ones that cannot be done by any sort, we keep praying about that. But it does not stop the fact that as people can still be discipled online, they can still do fellowship online, they can still be ministered to online, they can still worship online. Most of what the church is called to do can still be done on the internet. I know. Right now, many of you watching this, you are probably rioting in your brain right now that we're going to kill this guy. <laughs> yes, myth number seven. Everyone is not internet savvy and not everyone can participate in internet church services. I hear that a lot. I want, so you know, one of them said today on, the, on our group page, 
um, for the on our Facebook page for the cyber embassy. That what do you mean? There are people who are not even who cannot read and write. They cannot go on the internet. So are you now saying that they will be excluded from the Church of God? I'm like, hello, the Church. <laughs> I mean, that is a that's an easy one. All right, the internet Church is not for everyone. It says no Church can adequately cater for everybody, and that's just a fact. Everyone is not internet savvy. We get that. The internet church is not for everyone since no singular church can adequately reach or minister to all segments of the human population. It's not possible. Different people and different churches have been called or raised to minister to different segments of the population. Every ministry is different and targeted at different kinds of people. Even Jesus' ministry. It was focused exclusively on the Jews. Paul ministry was to the Gentiles. Peter was to the Jews. And on and on and on like that. Bishop Boyedepo can only minister to a certain set of people. Some people cannot relate to him in as much as he, he tries to broaden the church. Same way with even Pastor Deboe when he came into the church of the RCCG. Remember? He realized that several people cannot be ministered to into the, in the classical churches that he met. That's why I called some of the top-level guys who are very well educated in the Bakaris of this world and told them to go start a model church, a model church that can attract the kind of people he wanted to reach. And the rest is history. There are some people who will, even, even today, the classical churches in Redeem are still existing. Where those in that those classical churches still do not accept that those in modern churches are really, really serious Christians. And those in modern churches are thinking that those in classical churches are really, really ancient. But God is speaking to every one of them. Every church is called to a different type of people. Pastor Adeyemi has a different kind of kind of people that are attracted to his ministry. Some people will not be caught dead in his church. But his ministry and lives are getting blessed. T.D. Jakes, some people watch T.D. Jakes ministry and they just laugh. They say, this is not church. They have their own church that they prefer. But T.D. Jakes has been called to minister to some kind of people. Deeper life has its own type of people. Some people cannot fit in there. It does not mean deeper life is not doing God's work. Mountain of fire. There are some people that will ridicule it, but mountain of fire has been called to a certain set of people. Same way with the internet church. The internet church is being called to a certain type of people. That's why we say we minister to people who spend a lot of their time online. We have been called to minister to people on the internet. People who spend a lot of their time on the internet. So if you are not on the internet, we're not called to minister to you. There are many churches that will take care of you. But we are more concerned about that guy that spends eight hours of his time online, four hours online, three hours on the internet, that does almost everything in his life does shopping, does all the stuff that it does on the internet, that is the person we've been called to reach. And they will minister to the Holy Spirit We touch them. Wherever they are, regardless of what you think, the Holy Spirit is not limited to that church building. Basically, those are the seven um, myths I want to cover in this segment. The rest, there are so many more, but I didn't want the video to be too long so that uh, people can enjoy it and share it. Please share this with as many people as you know who may have some challenges with uh, uh, being part of an online church and if you are being led to be part of this, either as a worker, to support us financially, to be a minister, to be a preacher of the word, please let us know. Go to the cyberembassy.org slash pioneers. Let us lift up this work. Let us take advantage of this massive move of God. The internet has literally invaded every part of our lives. Why shouldn't we take God to go invade that same internet? Why can't we take it up to make sure that the, the, the word of God, the, the, the works of God, the, 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 the spirit of God rules in the affairs of men on the internet? That's what we have been called to do at the Cyber Embassy of Christ for All Nations. And I'm excited for this work, but I'm looking for people to help me carry this work to fruition. Because this is not my thing as it is. My job is to be the vision of Asia, ensure the vision gets established. And as soon as I can get that done, hand over the ministry to somebody who can really take it to a whole new level. 
while I retreat back to my convenient place of helping pastors do what they do better. I look forward to seeing you. Please go to the cyberembassy.org right now. Uh, it's the cyberembassy.org slash pioneers. And join us in this great work. We are going to be launching officially February 2nd, 2020. Pre-inauguration services and church activities will start 1st of January as we begin to figure this out. I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the technology. I'm not even technically sound myself. I'm going to be relying on technical people. So if you're out there watching this, you're a graphic designer, you know a lot about um, Facebook, about Instagram and all that, please come join us. Come help us. Come help me. Come help us make the work of God stand. I can't do it by myself. I'm just a lawyer. I am not internet savvy. I am not technically savvy. But I do know that 3 billion souls are there every day and somebody needs to start ministering to them exclusively. And that is what the Cyber Embassy of Christ for All Nations is all about. Join us, cyberembassy.org slash pioneers. We look forward to working with you in this new vineyard.